Okay. Interesting. Yep. So, uh, 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 Ethiopian coffee is better than Brazilian, and I thought Brazil is. Uh... I, oh, Brazilian is wonderful, but the first cup made all the difference. And now I get whatever kind I have, and it's usually some kind of espresso. See, my cup says I'm allergic to mornings. <laughs> Without coffee, I have no personality. Uh, yes, coffee like uh, makes people think it's uh, make it's them amazing, and it's healthy. It's very good for you. It prevents dementia. Yes, it yes. prevents mental degeneration. It's one of the only things that does it. Good. Dementia is a common problem, actually. Oh, yes, I know. I know all about it. Yeah, it runs. My father had it. My uncle had it. All the men in my family had it, starting at age 75. All of them. Uh, do you think reading can, can, can help this? Uh... They say that. They say that. I don't really know the research. Uh, I've, I've heard that stories can help you. I, I don't know. But the only thing I found in the research that really works consistently is coffee. It eliminates the bad chemicals in the arteries in the brain. Yes, yes. But it, it makes you awake all the time. That's one of the... Not me. It just problem. makes me normal. It doesn't make me awake. Just fine. It's perfect for me. If, yes, for, if I drink it in the evening, it makes me awake. Uh, no, I, I don't drink it in the evening. No, that's too much. I'm tempting fate if I do that. But it's just right the way I do it. Works for me. Okay, My good. uncle, not genetic, my uncle by marriage, was a brilliant electrical engineer. And he was one of the people who developed uh, FM radio. Absolutely brilliant. He drank 10 cups of coffee a day and was active until he was 102. So that's a good model. Wow. wow. Great. So very happy to see you again. Oh, well, thank you. Good to see you. Yes. How many people do we have? A lot. More than you can imagine. Really? 10, yes. 20, 30? No, more than 1,000. No kidding. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, we received more than 1,000, uh, uh, you know, people who would like to, uh, you know. Oh, that's wonderful. I love it. That's great. Yes. Okay. Because writing is important for a lot of people. Okay. So I should go for about one hour. Is that right? No, we are live now. Pardon? You, we are live. You can, you can start your paper. I can start anytime. Okay. I'm live. Yes. I'm drinking coffee. I'm okay. Uh, welcome to the uh, seminar, webinar. The title of my discussion is 17 Secrets of academic writing, and they're all secrets. Not very many people know about this stuff. And I'm going to end with a declaration of war against the publishers who are stealing money from us, in my opinion, and I don't care, all right? It's got to end. Future of our profession is at stake. The reason I like to talk about these things, I haven't done research in these areas. I've been a student of this stuff but it has helped me so much as a scholar. It's made a huge, huge difference. So it's very nice to pass this research along, even though I didn't, I think I wrote one, I did one study on this, this is all, but this is really what I've learned from other people. And let me begin with the secret number one, we'll have 17 secrets, and it's a big surprise to teachers. More writing will not result in better writing. If you assign your students five essays a week, 10 essays, 100 essays, they won't be better in writing. They won't have better style. They won't have better spelling. They won't have better grammar. And this makes sense to me because the work we've done in general says that we acquire language by input, 
not by output. We acquire language when we understand what people tell us and what we read. So this fits in. It's not a surprise. When you increase writing, you don't get better writing. So what does writing do for us? Should we worry about it? Yes. Writing helps us solve problems. Writing makes us smarter. My goodness, is this, this is so correct. It's amazing. I think about this stuff every day, all day when I do my work. It was Peter Elbow, Elbow, E-L-B-O-W, professor on the East Coast in the United States. He said it exactly right. Meaning is what you end up with, not what you start out with when you write, okay? Now the core of writing that makes it so powerful is revision. Revision is the center point of what we call the composing process. Composing process, how to use writing to make yourself smarter, how to avoid writer's block. Here's a number of quotes from writers. In fact, Neil Simon, an American playwright who's written, oh gosh, probably 40, 50 very good plays. Mediocre writers write, good writers rewrite. Simon says, that 90% of his writing day is revision, going over what he did, changing it. Well, the hero of all this is, of course, one of my favorite authors, Kurt Vonnegut, who has a really outstanding